Hello, my name is Alex Pentland. I'm a professor at MIT, where I direct the Connection Science Program. And I want to talk to you today about diversity. Uh, we talk a lot about diversity, but we don't often know exactly what it is or why we want it. Uh, what I want to suggest is that diversity is the root of collective intelligence. It's the key to making smarter decisions. And that sounds sort of esoteric and perhaps complicated, but it can be quite simple. So for instance, often cities uh, take samples as to crowdsource opinions from people. They have 311 lines or other sorts of ways of getting people's opinions. And what they typically do is they count the number of people that have one judgment versus another or one opinion versus another. Uh, but what that leads to are the sort of echo chambers that we see in social media, and, and it can be distorted in various ways. Often a much better way to do it is to take each neighborhood and ask, is the answer to the question one of the top concerns in most of the neighborhoods, regardless of the number of people? So as a percentage of each neighborhood, to say 80% of the neighborhoods put this in the top three of their responses in terms of percentage. So that way you get rid of one neighborhood that has five times as many responses as other neighborhoods. And experience has shown that that leads often to much better sorts of results, much wiser decisions, and certainly more inclusive decisions than simply counting. The Boston and their pothole report program was an example of that. They put this nice pothole report program in, they got lots and lots of potholes, but they were all in the rich neighborhoods where people had smartphones and could report it immediately. Um, you need to sort of norm out or average out the number of people from each neighborhood and then ask about, is this a shared concern? Is this a collective concern? to be able to make better decisions. This also comes up in other ways. So for instance, what we found across many, many cities is that if you look at the transportation of people uh, into and out of neighborhoods, neighborhoods that have lots of people coming in from lots of different places, not the number, the number of different places that they come from, uh, is an indication of whether this neighborhood is healthy or not healthy. So neighborhoods that have very diverse visitors for work, for shopping, for other sort of purposes are neighborhoods that are typically happy and growing. Neighborhoods where that collapses and it was diverse and now it's much less diverse are neighborhoods that are undergoing some sort of acute stress. And often it indicates that they will in the future have problems with crime, health, and other things. And of course, neighborhoods that are all, always sort of isolated from the, everywhere else, so very few neighborhoods go there, uh, are essentially ghettos, and they never do very well at all. So this is something you probably have in your uh, uh, repertoire already of data, is transportation records, of, but you may not have looked at it as neighborhood to neighborhood, transportation. You can also turn that around and say, well, gee, here's a neighborhood. Where do these people shop? Where do these people work? And you can look at, for each neighborhood, do they go out into the rest of the city into a diverse number of places? And what we find is that that predicts things like unemployment. If you don't see a diverse number of people, diverse number of destinations, rather, um, then you're likely to have persistent long-term unemployment. Uh, obviously, poor neighborhoods tend to be exactly those neighborhoods. So this is a way of promoting equity through measuring diversity both into the neighborhood and out of the neighborhood. And if you want a good example of this taken to the extreme, take a look at the website inequality.media.mit.edu, where you can see these sorts of maps that we've done for Boston and for New York. I think you'll be really surprised at this way of thinking about things. Thank you.